Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Uh, today we're actually going to take Matt's 2023 Camaro ZL1. He just got it last week. We are prepping it for the track. We're headed to Road America in May. Uh, it's currently beginning of April. So what we're gonna do is uh, change out the oil. We're gonna put some fresh oil in there, get that braking fluid out. We're gonna change the differential fluid. Uh, need to get the diff cleaned out and, and get all that sludgy stuff out of there. Uh, we're also gonna do a couple other things like of course the intake install. We're gonna put his skip shift eliminator in. We're gonna put lift pads on the car so we can consistently get it up real easy. Uh, and a couple of other things as well. Blackwing brake duct coolers, the LED side markers, and uh, overall just kind of give it a once over, make sure everything's running great. But most importantly, we're gonna change out the factory brake fluid to endless RF650 brake fluid to make sure that no matter how hard he pushes it on track, he's safe. Stick around, cause we're, well, wait a minute. All right, well, the truth is that I'm an idiot and I totally forgot to film his car uh, for this intro piece. Um, so stick around, enjoy the rest of the video. Matt's here, he's over there uh, in the corner. Say hi, Matt. This is his 2023 ZL1, which is uh, badass. It's got a beautiful spec on it. It's all black. It's got the black with red accent interior. He opted for the red belts, which are absolutely awesome. And uh, today we're gonna be taking this thing from stock to track ready. So a few of the things that we're gonna do, change the brake fluid to some high performance endless RF650.4 fluid. Uh, as you can see, we actually already put this Corsa intake on, but there's about 864 of those videos on YouTube already. So I'll spare you all of that work, but uh, we're also gonna change the oil, get his braking oil out of there and also do the diff fluid. But the first thing we're gonna start with is the lift pads. Right, when it comes to the lift pads, a lot of people ask, well, how do you initially get the car lifted to put the lift pads on? And the easy answer is using a pinch well adapter for your jack. Um, in this case, I have a ZL1 add-ons premium mag pad, which uh, includes the puck and the mag pad itself. Uh, this just slaps onto the pinch weld. That'll lift the side of the car up. And then from there, we can attach the lift points, both front and rear. There's a nice midpoint to lift the car from. So we're gonna dive under here, take a peek where the lift or the pinch weld lift points are. You got three of them on the Camaro. You've got this forward one here. That's the front of the car that way. Then you have the midpoint pinch weld here. You can actually see it there. And then there's one way, way in the back, right about there. So what we do is we take this premium magnetic jack pad and line it up with the pinch weld just like that we'll use our jack to lift the car from the middlemost point and then once we have the jack lined up and you just start lifting then once we have it high enough the lift points will actually go here and on that way far one back there so this is the rear of the vehicle. We're going to start here. You'll see this little, uh, almost like a white retaining clip for the body panel. And then um, you've got this plastic uh, ridge almost. What you'll want to do is take your lift point. You're going to find that ridge. You're going to line up the lift point right there, slide it forward, and then using the Allen key, actually tie that up and get it nice and tight here that'll pinch it together and it'll be solid from there you'll always be using the pinch weld to lift the car or uh, you know whether you're using a lift or whether you're putting some flat top jack stands or regular jack stands on it 
that's going to be the solution that you want. Now, if you have a secondary jack, what you'll want to do is slide it up under the lift point and put some pressure on it with the jack. Otherwise, if you don't have a secondary jack, what you'll want to do is once you've got these on here tight, you'll want to use your existing jack to put pressure on these and then check the tightness of the retaining screws to make sure that the jack, uh, to make sure that the lift point doesn't move on you. Now that we've got the rears on, we're gonna move to the front. Again, this is the pinch weld that we're gonna be aiming for. We're gonna take that lift point and gonna kind of center it to the opening of this cutout here and make sure we tighten those Allen keys. One pro tip that I can give you is to start threading these Allen retaining nuts or Allen retaining screws. Get them about halfway in. It'll save you a lot of time when it comes to actually getting this onto the pinch weld. Just like we did for the rear, you're going to want to put pressure with another jack or put it on a jack stand and lower it to make sure it's all the way up there before you do your final tightening. There you have it. We've got the front lift point installed. We already have the rear lift point installed. And I'm going to save you guys the extra unneeded video minutes because, spoiler alert, it's the same on the other side. You can now use uh, a hydraulic lift on these front and rear. You can use these uh, jack stands. Uh, I suggest you pick up the pinch weld mag puck from ZL1 add-ons. And of course, I'll have uh, links to everything in the description. Okay, we've got the lift pads on. We've got the car up on jack stands. And uh, I've got a light under there so I can see a little easier. And what I'm going to do next is make a video on how to install the skip shift eliminator. Because on a manual six, that gets super annoying when it forces you from first to fourth. We're going to take the wheels off next because uh, we're also going to change out the side markers to LED. But uh, next time you see this, those wheels will be off. And I will show you how to do skip shift eliminator. All right, here we are under the car. This is the driver's side of the transmission. Um, this is the trans temp sensor. You can actually use this to drain the transmission fluid. Uh, today we're not doing that because the car is brand new. Um, so it doesn't need trans fluid yet. But we are going to get the skip shift eliminator installed. So pull that out of the package. And just wanted to show you uh, it's going to be tough to see on video, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll move the camera around in a second here. But way, way up here, that little plug, that is the skip shift solenoid. And the easiest way to get that plug out is using a long hook tool. Um, get one of these, you'll get it on the clip itself, and you'll pull it off. I am going to try to get in here. Sometimes you can move this transmission line. It's just clipped into this post here. Uh, it doesn't, uh, it, it can move if you need it to. Uh, it just pops off of this little housing here, but I think I can get this without moving that. So I'm just going to use the hook tool to put pressure on the clip to release it and pull down at the same time. There we go. We got it loose. So I'll pull this wire down and there we have it. That is the skip shift wiring harness. And the way this is designed is that this end plugs in on the harness side. And then we're going to end up plugging this back into that sensor way up there for the skip shift solenoid. So I'm going to attempt to route this by hand and then use the 
hook tool if I need to, which looks like I may not. Okay, it's able to get it plugged in. Now, just so this thing isn't flapping around, making noise and bouncing up against your, uh, your vehicle, uh, we're gonna go ahead and use a zip tie to tie it to this other wire harness up here. And that'll keep it from making any inadvertent noise, uh, thinking that something might be wrong with your car. And that's it. That's uh, as easy as the skip shift eliminator is to install. Get the zip tie on, call it a day. One of the other items that we're gonna be tackling to get the car track ready is changing out the OEM brake cooling duct to one of the Blackwing brake cooling ducts. Here is the OEM piece. It uses three uh, seven millimeter bolts uh, that screw into the aluminum arm here. And we're actually gonna be replacing that with the ones that come on the Blackwing CT5V. Well, you can see it's a significant, significant amount of airflow that is gonna hit the back of the rotor there. And uh, it'll help kill, keep the brakes nice and cool on track days. As I mentioned, we've got a seven millimeter bolt. There's three of them here. Uh, pretty straightforward. Just gonna pull those out. Now, the one thing that we do have to consider that is not on the new Blackwing duct is the magnetic ride sensor harness here. So we'll pull this off and then we're gonna drill two holes into the Blackwing duct right here and place this harness in the same spot to make sure that it doesn't get tangled up within the tires. I went ahead and drilled uh, two holes for the MRC sensor, uh, the mag ride control, that'll plug into the back and then we'll just reuse the same three bolts to get this on. I used a seven thirty seconds drill bit to get the right size here so that these don't fall out during track use. So there you have it. Blackwing brake duct installed and uh, everything is clear. What I'll do is I'll move the steering left and right to make sure that none of this wiring gets caught up on anything, but uh, we should be good to go. Repeat the same on the other side and you've got the CT5V Blackwing brake cooling ducts installed. All right, next we are going to change the oil. Um, I know there's a lot of oil change videos out there, but I figured, you know what, we're doing this whole prep, might as well get in there. We are gonna use the uh, Supercar 5W50. The reasons behind that, I'm not really gonna get into in this video here, um, but uh, there's a couple of things that I like to use to make changing the oil on your sixth gen Camaro a whole lot easier. One of them is an angled, filler neck adapter. The other is a specific GM uh, funnel that locks in. I'll, uh, I'll show you that in a second. Many of you or a lot of you already use these. It's like a OEM tools or motive tools uh, designed to lock in to the uh, valve cover there and make your oil change a little easier. Well, that angle isn't really conducive to getting oil in real easy. So what I did is I purchased this OEM angle neck and uh, I believe it's off of one of the trucks but basically this 
locks in and gives you a nice angle, makes it a whole lot easier pour your oil in. You don't have to worry about spills and uh, it's fantastic. I'll show you where the drain plug is and we'll start dumping some oil out. All right, here we are under the car, uh, front of the car that way. As you can see, the oil drain plug is on the passenger side of the vehicle. It is a 15 millimeter head uh, on that drain plug. So we'll go ahead and crack the oil there. Your oil filter uh, is the AC Delco PF64. In fact, this is the OEM, the factory filter. It, it even has a little sticker that says replace with PF64, which is kind of cool. We've got it uh, vented up top. Obviously the oil cap is off at the fill point. So we'll get this cracked open, dump it all in there and uh, we'll get this oil changed. All right, so now that we're under the car and we found the drain plug right there, again, 15 mil, we'll go ahead and crack that loose. Well, that was pretty easy. Sometimes those can be extra tight. Uh, looks like that one is good to go. goes. So we'll let that drain out. And while that is draining, I will uh, grab my oil filter wrench. And the reason I'm going to do that is because a lot of times these should only be hand tight. However, uh, these factory, or if you take it somewhere else to get the oil changed, we can, uh, they can, they can be put on way too tight. So as we're letting that drain out, go ahead and just kind of loosen that. I don't want to, completely loosen it because I don't want the oil to start leaking down here. So we'll give it a second. We'll wait and we will uh, move that drain pan over. And we'll take that filter off. All right. Now that the oil is damn near out, I'm going to go ahead and put the drain plug back in. And then we're going to move the catch pan over and uh, start loosening the filter. Now the uh, drain plug uses, it's either 15 foot pounds or 18 foot pounds. I'll put the uh, appropriate amount of uh, you know, the, the proper torque setting on there or good old German measurement of guten type. Before putting the new filter in, I do like to add a bit of oil to it, uh, make sure that it's not a dry start, although that's nearly impossible today with how much oil is still kind of left in the engine, but not a bad idea to do. And then uh, just, you know, using your finger, you can just get some oil onto the gasket itself, which uh, helps create a nice seal. Uh, and then when you put it back on, you want to make sure that the seal that was on the old filter isn't still there when you go to uh, when you go to put the new one on. 
Otherwise, what'll happen is you'll leak oil everywhere. And, and again, this should be hand tight. You don't want anything crazy on here. Now you want it so tight that you can't get it loose the next time you go to change your oil. And I did confirm that the gasket came off of the old one. So just getting some extra grip in there. We're good to go, ready to start pouring oil in from the top. Now that we have the oil plug, the drain plug back in, the new filter on, we are going to go ahead and start putting the new engine oil in. Just so I can show you, the oil dipstick is over here. So we'll, uh, we'll check the oil uh, after uh, we get this thing filled. It does take 10 quarts of oil. Now that we've got 10 quarts of oil in there, which seemingly took all year, we uh, checked the dipstick. What we're looking for here, if we, uh, if our oil fill is within that range right in here, then we're good. Pull it out and looks like we are Perfect. All right, we just finished the oil change and now we are going to change the differential fluid. Now I already have a diff fluid video. Uh, I'll put the link up on your screen now. You can check that out uh, for how to change the diff fluid on a sixth gen Camaro with the ELSD. That's uh, the SS1 LE, the ZL1, ZL11 LE. We're at that next. All right, we just finished the diff fluid change. Again, I already have a video on that on my uh, YouTube channel. So last step of this process is changing out the DOT4 fluid that comes with the Camaro and putting in some high performance endless RF650, which we do have over here. Thank you, Matt, my lovely assistant. So we're going to put the RF650 uh, racing super fluid into the car and we'll be all set. Uh, I'll put a link to that video because I also have a how to on that on my channel. All right, we have finished the dot floor, the endless fluid uh, swap. We've got everything all set up and uh, button back together, get the light out of here. It's been a long day, but uh, Homerun, you've, uh, you've done uh, well picking this vehicle. So can't wait to see you put it on track at Road America. We'll be there yeah. May 6th and 7th, and uh, we're gonna have a great time. I'll give a recap of all the things that we did. Solid. Matt, enjoy the ride home. And uh, the new side markers look amazing. Got all your fluids changed. We are ready to hit the track. Yes, sir. Take it easy, brother. brother. See you, man. See you all soon. So where editing comes in. And then just a little bit of, that was awesome. <laughs> one of the black wing brake cooling ducts. Keep bringing that one. <laughs> totally forgot, I should probably have it. 100% uh, throttle, 100% of the time. It's still recording right now. So, but no, 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 we're good. Uh,
magic of editing. Okay. Hot mic. Hot mic. Hot mic. Hot mic. Hot mic. <laughs> uh, we have so far changed out. Oh God. <laughs> That's that's gonna make the don't stall it. 